This is Algebra 2 with Trig, Unit 6C.1. We're going to apply the properties of logarithms. We've learned some about logarithms up to this point. Now we're going to learn about some of these properties when we're having log base b of a certain value that has factors, we can write this in a different format. We use the same base and you add the two logarithms together. So by breaking up the factors, we can add them together. Remember a logarithm equals an exponent, and when you're multiplying two bases together, you, you add exponents. So that's kind of a relationship between trying to remember these. This is subtraction when you're dividing. Just like exponents we divide when we are subtracting. Uh, we subtract the exponents when we're dividing two terms with the same base. And then this is an interesting one. We can take the n value and bring it in front. So we need to recognize that we can go in both directions. Sometimes it's our benefit to go from subtraction and combine them as division. Addition, combine them as multiplication. And other times we want to separate them. It's the difference between expanding and condensing. Expanding, we're breaking it apart with addition and subtraction. Condensing, we're bringing it together. Multiplication and division. Now we can use these properties to help us break down. Here we're, we're told that log base 5 of 4, so 5 to what power equals 4, and it happens to be just about 0.861. So we want to figure out 5 to what power equals 4 ninths. Well we're given these two different logarithms. We know what log base 5 of 4 is, we know what log base 5 of 9 is, so if we can convert this, since it's subtraction, we're going to convert this, since we have division here, we're going to use subtraction, and the log base 5 of 4 was 0.861 and 1.365. We would get our calculator and 0.861 minus 1.365 and that tells us that we have a value of negative 0 0.504. Negative 0.504. So what that means is if we have 5 to the negative 0.504 power, that we should get an answer of 4 over 9. Now it might be super close to this because that's a rounded value. These are rounded numbers. So 4 over 9, if you don't know, is a repeated of all 4s. And we can see here that we're getting a repeat of fours for the most part. So that's a, just a good way to test it to see if it worked out. Five to this power gives us almost four ninths. We know our answer here, five squared is 25. So we know the number is going to be a little bit bigger than two. But five cubed is 125. 36 is much closer to 25. So maybe we can break this up. How could we use numbers like 4s and 9s to help us break up 36? We could use 12 and 3. That multiplies to be 36. But those aren't 4s and 9s. We know our data about 4s and 9s. So we're going to break up log base 5 of 4 times 9, that is 36. 
we couldn't use fours and nines with division to make 36, but we can use multiplication to make 36 using these numbers, log base five of four and of nine. So now we know that we can separate these using addition. So log base five of four is 0.861 plus 1.365, and using our calculator, 0.861 plus 1.365, 2.226. And we can test that if we wish. Five to what power? Well, it won't be that one, it'll be this one. Five to what power equals 36? So five to this power, the previous answer, and that is just about 36. It's rounded, but that's because we're using rounded numbers. How can we get 81? We can only use nines and fours. Well, I know 81 is made up of log base 5 of 9 times 9. So I can use log base 5 of 9 plus log base 5 of 9. That's one way to do it. 1.365 plus 1.365. and we get 2.73. That's one way to do it. Another way that we can do this is I know that log base five, I know 81 is nine squared. So I can bring the two in front using our power property and we have log base five of nine. And we know that that log base five of nine from our given information is 1.365. So one thing I can say is two times 1.365, and I'm gonna get that same exact answer, two different ways, however you see it. They will always be the same answer in that case. Now we're working with log base six of five. We know what that value is, log base six of eight. We know what that value is approximately. So you go ahead, this is a you try. You can pause the video, you can try these three problems, and when you get done, I'll walk you through the steps. So this is five divided by eight. We can put that into subtraction. Log base six of five minus log base six of eight. We know log base six of five is apparently 898. It's a decimal point. Minus 1.161. And our calculator is gonna help us. 0.898 minus 1.161 and we get negative 0.263 and we can test that answer if we wish 6 to the power of our answer equals some crazy decimal and that crazy decimal should be pretty close to the problem that we're working with. 0.624, and here the real answer should have come out to be 0.625. So very accurate. 
just not perfect. All right, how can we get 40 using numbers like fives and eights? Well, I know, of course. We're gonna multiply five times eight. That makes 40. If you're multiplying two factors together, we can separate those two logarithms using addition. We know what log base six to five is, 0.898. And we know what log base 6 of 8 is, 1.161, and we can add those together. We have, I'm sure I can see my numbers here, 0.898, and we're adding that to 1.161. So add your two values together, and we get... 2.059, and we know that we're going to say 6 to the power of our answer, and we should be looking at something very close to 40. Not perfectly 40, because these were rounded numbers to begin with. So we got rounded result when we work with rounded answers. But we were supposed to get 40. We got pretty darn close to 40. So... We got, we have 2.059. 64, how could we work with 64? We have the numbers five and eight that we can use. What makes 64? Multiplication. Well, I know that log base six of eight squared. Eight squared makes 64. And if I use eight squared, I can bring the two in front. And I know what log base six of eight is. That's the given information. So we have two times 1.161. And that gives us 2.322. So 6 to that answer should be very close to 64. 6 to what number gives us 64? And it should be that number. Very close, just over by a tenth. Alright, so that's one set of problems that we can do using the properties. When asked to expand, we use the properties of logarithms to break down a logarithm into simpler components. The final answer, each term should be in simplest form. And in condensing, when asked to condense logarithm expressions with the same base, we do the reverse. When condensing, our final answer should only use the word logarithm once. So here we go. So here, what do you see? I see a fraction. So I know a fraction has a numerator and a denominator. Well, I break up a fraction by doing subtraction. Now what I see here is multiplication. So I break up multiplication using addition. Then I have minus log base 3 of y to the fourth. So it kind of looks like I'm done, but don't forget you can bring the 4 in front and can't we write the square root differently?
Can't we write the square root with an exponent of a half? So then we minus log base 3 of y to the fourth. Now I'm going to move both exponents up to the front of their own logarithm. So log base 3 of 7 plus a half times the log base 3 of x minus 4 log base 3 of y. So first we saw a fraction. We broke it apart with subtraction. Then we saw multiplication. We broke that apart using addition. We saw our opportunity to write a radical using fractional exponents. And then we used the power property and brought those in front of their own logarithm. All right, let's see how this goes. Again, we have a big fraction. So log, this is a common log. There's no base written. So the common log of 7y cubed minus the common log of 4x squared. Now I have log 7 plus log y cubed minus, now you got to be careful in this case. We've talked a lot about this in the past. When there's a subtraction sign, we're subtracting this whole logarithm. So when we write log 4 plus log x squared, we need to be sure we use parentheses around that addition because it's got to represent them being a pair. So there's nothing we can do with the common log of 7. Here we can bring the 3 in front. Log base 3 of y minus nothing I can do with log base or the common log, log base 10, but the, the common log of 4. And I can bring the 2 in front, but don't forget to also distribute. So you need another minus 2 log of x. Now we're going to go the other way. Where you see addition, we're going to multiply. Where you see subtraction, we're going to divide. If you have a number sitting in front of the logarithm, we're going to use the power property and bring it up on top. So we have log base 2 plus log 3 cubed minus log of 9. We know that we have log of 2 plus log of 27 minus log of 9. Now, order of operations tells us that it looks easier that we'll be able to work with a 9 and 27. So let's hold on to that addition. We can write log of 27 divided by 9. And we know that that means 3. So that's really log of 3. So log of 2 plus log of 3 is 2 times 3, which this should be the same thing as log of 6. Wow. In this case, we don't have any variables. So if you could test it out. We're using common log. Log of 2 plus 3 log of 3 minus... Well, i got to watch my parentheses. Log of 2, close my parenthesis, plus 3 times the log of 3, close my parenthesis, 
minus log of 9. I can close my parentheses if I want, and I get this crazy decimal. Well, I'm trying to tell you that that's the same thing as log of 6, the common log of 6. So I'm expecting to get the same decimal. Brilliant. It's the same exact thing. All right. We're not allowed to use a calculator to get our answer. Right? We could do this all without a calculator. No need anywhere to use a calculator. Now let's try it some with variables. It's not as easy to use a calculator with that. We're going to use the same properties. I see a power property I can use. Natural log of 3 plus natural log of x squared minus the natural log of y. There's no advantage in which order we go in here. So we can combine these two. Natural log of 3 x squared, because they're going to get multiplied together, minus natural log of y. And when you're subtracting two logarithms, you're going to write division using a single logarithm. All right. Finally, we get to this little cheat that we can use a change of base formula. When appropriate, we can use the change of base formula. It's a good way for you to check some of your work also through some of the properties we've been talking about. But you need to know the properties. Notice how it looks like the M is higher than the base. That helps me remember that log of m, uh, let's see, I'm going to rewrite this as log base c of m and log base c of b. Now c is there saying that the base can be any number you want. It's kind of a wacky concept. It can be any base that you want we typically want it to be the common log. So we can call that base of 10 M and log of B. Let me try something that you already know. You know what log base two of eight equals. You know that log base two of eight would be 2 to the third power equals 8. So you know that this should equal 3. Well, I'm showing you that if you take log of 8 over log of 2, log of 8, close the parenthesis, divided by log of 2, notice here that the property writes the log twice. It's not like the properties that we did back here where you don't write the log twice in the division. But with this, we have to write the log twice, and I'm expecting to get 3. Priceless. So we come down here. 6 to what power makes 11? Well, 6 to the first power is 6, 6 to the second power is 36, so this is well less than 2. So let's figure this out. I'm going to use a change of base formula. And we say that the log of 11, close your parenthesis, divided by log of 6, and that should be 1.33. I could round that to a 4. That's an approximate answer. We like to use a squiggly line. Okay, I want to show you another method. All right, since we're using our calculator right now anyway. there's You can get there in different ways, but there is a shortcut. We can use alpha, which is in this case the green button. I hit alpha y equals. I get this new menu you may never have used before. All right, so I'm about fractions you can work with. 
we're going to get into function. So to get to that, you have to hit window because that's in the F2 column. And you can do some absolute value, some sums. We're coming down to number five. And look at that. Your calculator does have an opportunity to have your base and what you're taking the logarithm of. Some of you know this. And we get that same answer that we just talked about. But in some higher maths, you're not going to be able to use a graphing calculator. So you might just be able to use a basic calculator. So you do need to know the change of base formula. Let's try ours. We're going to say log of 15 divided by log of 3. You cannot call that 5. Do not call that log of 5. But I can say log 15, parenthesis, divided by log of 3, and I get this answer of 2.46. So 3 to the first power is 3, 3 to the second power is 9, 3 to the third power is 27, so 3 is too big, 2 is too small, so it's somewhere in between. And let's test this out. Alpha, y equals, over to window, you go down to number 5 and hit enter. You can put in your base. We had a base of 3. And what we're taking the base of was 5, or 15. And we should get the same exact answer. All right, now it's your turn. You can pause the video. You can work through these expanding, condensing, and evaluate. Here we have log base 5 of x squared minus log base 5 of the cube root of y. I know the cube root can be written with an exponent. So that's y to the one-third power. And now I'm going to bring both of those exponents in front of their own logarithm. Log base 5 of x minus one-third log base 5 of y. Here I'm condensing. So I notice I have my power property I can use first. Two to the third power minus log of three. There's no advantage of what order I do this in. So I'm going to, well, I'm first going to turn my two to the third power into eight. This becomes 72 because I can say 9 times 8 is 72 divided by 3. And I know that 2 goes into 7. Uh, 3 goes into 7 two times with one left over. 3 goes into 12 four times. So I know this is the same as a log of 24. Log of 50 divided by log of 7. Remember the 50 is higher than the 7. The 7 is on bottom, you might say. So that reminds me that it goes into the bottom of the change of base formula. We're using the change of base formula to evaluate this. It's going to be a little bit larger than 2, of course, because two or 7 squared is 49. So I'm expecting this answer to be just over 2. 
log of 50, close a parenthesis, divided by log of 7, should be just over the number 2, 2.01. And I could have hit alpha, y equals, gone over to window to be sure we get into the functions. Going to change my base. We could have put 7 there and 50 here. And we're going to get that same exact 2.01. Same answer. Okay, our last one. It's a little intimidating. But for a sound with an intensity of I, which is watts per square meter, the loudness, how loud is it, has to do with the intensity. So the loudness, which is L of I, of a sound, which is measured in decibels, is given by this crazy looking function. So this is our loudness, 10 times the log base 10 of our intensity divided by I of O. I of O is the intensity of a barely audible sound. So that's going to be always 10 to the negative 12. So the intensity of a guitar, the I value of a guitar, is 10 to the 2.8 watts per square meter. So what is the loudness of an electric guitar? So we're going to use what is the loudness. That's what we're trying to calculate. So this is 10 times the log of 10 to the 2.8 over our audible sound, which is 10 to the negative 12. We know from exponents that if the base is the same, we can add, or in this case, subtract exponents. So I'm going to say that the loudness equals 10, the common log of 10 to the 2.8 minus 12, and of course, we know that 2.8 minus 12 gives us 0.92. So this is 10 to the negative 9.2. Now we can use our power property. We bring our 10 up on top. So that means we are going to multiply that. We get negative 92. And if these two bases are the same, then our final answer, the loudness, I'm getting an answer of negative 92. And I see where I went wrong. When we were here, we needed to subtract the negative 12. So when you subtract a negative 12, you minus negative 12, which actually means add. Sorry about that. That becomes 14.8. And when we times it by 10, that's 148. And when the bases are the same, our loudness is 148 decibels. Good job, everybody.